Hello there, and welcome to Isaac and Friends, and this is a D&D &D story slash campaign diary. One of the first few on this channel, my name's Isaac, I play a character called Hex in this campaign. He, he is a Warforged Hexblade Warlock. Hopefully, Trey and I will be able to get together at some point and animate this little story, but for now... Our story begins with a group of adventurers meeting up in a town, none of which have ever met each other beforehand, and but would soon come to get to know each other quite well through some zany antics and craziness, as does every adventuring party, to be fair. Obviously, we have my Hexblade warlock, Hex, aptly named. We have... A ranger, Bear Silver, who is a wood elf, a halfling rogue, our furbolg druid, and of course, Cyrus, the Roman legionnaire, and a tabaxi artificer named Nightshade. Sorry if I forget anybody that's part of this party, if I forget the name of your character, there's kind of a reason I needed you guys needed to write it down. Uh, oops. <laughs> Anywho, the group has essentially come to this port town for whatever various reasons their individual concepts. The rogue probably to steal something. The druid, well, probably doing something to get supplies. Hex coming back from being a Former soldier, now kicked out of the military after, well, literally every single scouting team that he has been a part of dying. This earning him name the name Hex. Apparently the military decided they didn't want a uh, robot that seems to bring nothing but bad luck. The Roman legionnaire coming into town hoping to find information about the 9th Legion. Yes. He is from that legion. The legion which disappeared somewhere in the middle of Britannia some time ago. So yes, it's a bit of an isekai story. Ranger, similar ideas. For whatever reason, our team has kind of shambled into town. They all seem to meet up in the town square looking around for different things. They speak to each other as adventurers seeking... The see what news and information is available and are met up by a sailor who has some casual conversation and talks to the party a little bit as this is going on suddenly we hear crashing noises large rumbles throughout the town almost as of an earthquake and to our surprise great crystalline red vines breaking through the surface surface buildings and more people running in absolute terror the sailors suggest to the party that it might be a good idea to leave about now as this seems to be a little bit more out of their hands than anything else the party of course agrees to that concept and decides to beat feet rather than trying to figure out what in the world's going on here because this doesn't seem like some Thing they really want to deal with more like some horrible horrible bad experiment from a wizard gone wrong and they're not exactly quick to deal with some high level level wizard's shenanigans they make it to the port where they're greeted by a large crowd being kept at bay from the ships a group of thugs and their boss have decided to try and commandeer all the vessels as the party arrives, they're greeted by their sailor friend with a bit of a lump on her head. Apparently, the hooligans did not care that she was, in fact, one of the captains of the vessels. And had basically decided to try and commandeer her ship. Before much more could be said, the boss of the thugs notices the adventurers and decides that they might have some good loot on them. As such, he yells over the crowd, Hey, get them! They're bound to have something good on them. We're taking their loot. Well, the adventuring party didn't exactly take too kind to that, as you can imagine. As Hex decides to start yelling with an intimidation of 18. Proclaiming, 
Surrender or die. This manages to scare the mass majority of the thugs, with the party engaging the others, doing some pretty good damage to them. It even frightens the boss, who through after some few seconds of fighting, decides to run off the, si the end of the pier. A cowardly, frightened man, terrified of a very angry combat made robot. Who then promptly drowns thanks to all of the loot that he decided to carry on himself. I guess greed doesn't pay, does it? Well, after seeing their boss drowning, and after especially having some of their comrades literally being filled with arrows, battered to death by a furbolg and an angry tabaxi artificer, they decide it's better to run and be feet away from the docks. The party board the ship alongside the captain, and the vessel sails off, with horrifying crystalline vines engulfing the town and the port as they leave. Much to the surprise of the party, the ship begins to lift off into the air, after the captain gives word to her first mate, which they had not even seen before until now. More of a jellyfish than a man, simply floating into the air. The ship takes off into the sky higher and higher and higher, until finally leaving the atmosphere, and a magic air bubble engulfing the vessel. The party, the party is shocked, as they are no longer in the atmosphere of their world, as their planet goes smaller and smaller into the distance. They see not just the simple town being engulfed, but their entire world being swallowed whole by a red crystalline vine that seems to be bursting from the very center of the planet itself, thanking their stars that they had managed to escape. Whether this was good luck or not, they might well find out, as the captain informs them that she intends to take them to the Rock of Braille. A port among the stars, perhaps, where they may find something of comfort. As the party sails for about a week, they notice everything in the stars. They're amazed by the beauty of star whales and the various blinking lights in the sky. Unable to really tell what time it is to sleep, they simply go to bed, except for, well, Hex. Hex, being a warforged, doesn't really need sleep, or food, or, hell, air. He is, after all, a construct. But the machine, the old warbot, is still impressed. Being 20 years old on the upper end of warforged, it's quite amazing for this old machine to watch in surprise as the galaxy's wonders. As they sail past a planet that seems to be detonating itself, Hex notices something peculiar along with the rest of the crew. An almost burning flame fireball of a, starts screaming past toward the ship, landing onto the deck. But rather than being a hot chunk of rock, it's a person. Kind of. It looks more like a lion man than anything else. Perhaps a relative to... Any space relative to the tabaxi, perhaps? Who knows? The individual dusts himself off, carrying two weapons in each... One in each hand, and introduces themselves. Sorry, I kind of forgot the name of this character... In fact, to be perf little side note, the player actually kind of forgot the name of this character because he gave us several different names. Eventually, even writing the character's name as literally no name. Yeah. <laughs> we'll figure one out. Anywho, back to the story. As the party now introduce themselves to the, new, to the stranger, 
A dragonfly-shaped ship comes screaming after their own galleon. The captain is imp claims it's impossible for them to get away as the vessel is much faster than her own. They must prepare to be boarded and prepare to make a standoff against these astral imper elf imperials. Not quite knowing what an astral elf imperial is, the party didn't really take much care to find out as multiple elves had decided to board their vessel. Three in particular. One holding a blade against the throat of the captain herself, and two more seeming to go after the party. Combat ensues. The Leonin rushes forward and strikes at the elves with double blades, the druid similar to the same. The rogue and the ranger begin flooding fly arrows, and Hex looks at one of the elves as the elf feels doom, despair, and, and horror before the very before the machine. Hex has used the hex blade effect as a bonus action. As a bonus action, I can actually hex a character. Anything within any enemy within a side of my character, I can literally cause them to have disadvantages to attack me, as well as multiple other nasty effects. In fact, by killing them, I also gain health points, too. A really nifty thing that I can only do once per long rest, but pretty damn good for, for what you need it. Hex lets out two blasts from Eldridge Blast, hammering into the elf. The party manages to take down in a matter of seconds. <laughs> the elf commander, the elf, and all but one of the elves left standing. The crew aboard the dragonfly decide it's not worth their time, cut the ropes, and decide to fly off. The last remaining elf is then tied up and interrogated by Hex. At first, the elf tries the grandstand, something that Hex is not amused by. Every time he tries to open his, his mouth and proclaim the glory of the Astral Elf Empire, Hex gives him a quick and sharp slap with the back of his hand. This goes on for about several minutes, until finally the elf is left glaring at Hex, not happy at all about being shut, shut up in such a manner. Finally, Hex simply sta states what he, his intentions in straightforward announcement. You can either continue to grandstand, and I will continue to slap you, or you will answer our question straightforward and to the point. Your choice. The elf very angrily glares at Hex, but gives a nod of, of affirmation of understanding what's going on. Hex then questions the elf. What are you doing here? Why did you attack us? The elf simply states that he doesn't really know much. Their orders were simply to prevent any ships fleeing from this area. Fleeing from the vines. He doesn't know a whole lot other than that. They were just simply, that was just simply their orders. To prevent anyone from escaping and spreading word as to what was going on. Hex, rather frustrated with this and not bemused, decides, well, if you are of no use to us, he, li he picks up the astral elf and flings him overboard. The elf in shock, his eyes frozen and such, as he drifts into the silent void of space. And that is where this little segment of the journal will end. I hope you guys enjoyed this little bit of the story, and I'll treat you to some more later. Take care, everyone, and thank you for listening.